Today we are talking to people behind those headlines because one of the things I've learned as a reporter, you read a headline, the story is so much bigger than that headline. So one of those stories that people are talking about, me and the team are talking about, this little girl, she made headlines which sparked outrage really around the country. Uh, one of the headlines that it said is a neighbor Call to police on a little black girl while spraying, spraying uh, lantern flies exposes a deeper problem. So here's the story. The little girl is nine years old. Her name is Bobby Wilson. She says she loves science. And there was body cam footage of the moment that shows what set off this firestorm. So here's the body cam video. Take a look. How are you? What's going on? Is that your mom? What's that? Oh, what are you using to spot their... You're trying to catch him? Mm -hmm. Is this your mom coming down the street? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. I just got to let you know I'm recording, okay? I have a body camera. Someone just called in and said that she was alone spraying something on the grass. She's catching the... I see that. So what you saw there, police officers handling the situation, appropriately approaching the mom and talking to her, her mo the mother is Monique jo Joseph. Um, the neighbor called authorities to report what he thought was a suspicious person in the neighborhood. Uh, in fact, this is a direct quote from what he said at the time on a recorded call. The quote is, and I know this is going to be hard for y'all to hear because it's hard for me to read this. It says, there's a little black woman walking, spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees. As you can see from her physicality, she's a little kid. It turned out that Bobby was just wanting to help the neighborhood. Um, you might have remembered those stories where they were telling all of us to get rid of these lantern flies that were everywhere. Um, and they were saying, you know, get rid of them if you see them. They're invasive. Um, and they were all over the sidewalk in her hometown of Caldwell, New Jersey. The incident fueled this conversation that we have all too often about discrimination against black and brown children especially. It's been in the headlines, though, this week back in the news because guess what? Bobby was honored by an Ivy League University, Yale. And it's put her back in the headlines, this time for a different reason. What I love about this story, most of all, her mother says, she's not a victim, she's a champion. So let's meet her nine-year-old Bobby, her sister Hayden, and her mom, Monique Jones. You know, first of all, you look adorable. You're the cutest scientist I've ever seen. <laughs> Monique, I have to give you a shout out as a mom for so many reasons, because one of the conditions that you agreed to to come on this show is you said, I don't want people to see her as a victim. I want them to know how great she is yes. and not be this headline of a victim. <laughs> Why was that important to you? That was important to me because that's who Bobby is. That's absolutely who she is. We've called her Bobby Wonder since she was around one years old. Bobby Wonder. Bobby Wonder. <laughs> right? And this, the truth of the matter is, we have Bobby every night when we, when we go to sleep. So it's not about the victimization, it's that she's here and we're celebrating what she was being honored for. And that's, that's amazing. So that's what we're going to talk about. I love it. I love it. And, and I mean, that's the headline that brings a smile to my face because I called the team and I'm like, she was honored by Yale. They wouldn't even look at my application when I applied. <laughs> and now you've got this big honor. Do, do you know what Yale University is? It's a pretty big deal. Yes. Yeah. So they, they, they bring you on and they honor you as a scientist? Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> You, you've always loved science, and when you heard about these lantern flies, you were like, I'm on the case. Yeah. All right. So you made, like, was it soap and water? It was, it was water, oh. dish soap, and apple cider vinegar. Water, dish soap, apple. How did you know this recipe? Because I was looking on TikTok, and I saw people that just did water and soap, so I thought I could add the apple cider vinegar, so it would make it even stronger. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you're, you're thinking, so you have your, your apple cider vinegar, your, your dish soap, your water, and you're on the case. Yes. Did you catch any of them? Yeah. I caught you caught them. a bunch of them? Yeah. 
Okay, good, because I don't like the way they look. They were scary. <laughs> um, when you were walking, we saw that video, and as I said to our audience, you know, we're the TAM fam, and, and part of being family is having those difficult oh. conversations, even with our children. Yes. Um, that video of the officer approaching you and saying, hey, we got this call, what was that like to process, knowing we're talking about Bobby Wonder here? You know, um, just as a black woman, you really don't want to have confrontation with the police. Um, as an adult, and when it's your child, um, it's just a space you mentally don't want to go to. So it was hard. Um, but I do want to say that I commend the Caldwell Police Department. You can see it in the body cam. He did community policing. Yeah. So I'm grateful. Yeah. Um, you know, the neighborhood is one of those idyllic kind of neighborhoods. When you even look at the street, I'm like, what? I need to look on Zillow to get a house on that block. <laughs> you say that this neighborhood was always a great community. Everyone's always gotten along well with one another in yes. the neighborhood. So. Since you've listened to the recorded police call, um, you how does that work when a neighbor has done something like this? I'm still figuring that out. But what I can tell you is I made every attempt to try to have a conversation with my neighbor. You know, we have some mutual friends. I tried that route. I asked my um, the police captain of our police station, I said, would you please try to orchestrate and mediate a conversation between the three of us so that he can understand how those words landed, what it means to us? You know, I didn't want to assume his intentions, but I understood, for me, how I received it. Um, but I tried, and so he didn't want to have the conversation, and um, I decided to speak out. So we... Um... <laughs> We did reach out to the neighbor for a comment, and he told us, quote, he meant no harm, and he was just trying to report something he felt was unusual in his neighborhood. Um, he also said that he immediately apologized when he realized it was your daughter, and then he apologized again. But I do think what you tried to do, because like I said, I like to go beyond the headline, right. because the headline can be triggering, it can be upsetting, but to know that you on the other end, because this is your baby, right. this happened to you, that you were willing to put the headline aside and say, let's sit down and talk and let's yes. learn from each other. Yes. I think that is so commendable. Um, people don't do it enough. We don't talk to each other enough. <laughs> Hayden, you are the protective big sister here. You gave a big speech at the town council meeting. Um, why did you feel the need to stand up and use your voice to go past the headlines? I felt the need because, you know, Bobby's my little sister. That's what I'm supposed to do. Like, if I didn't do that, I would feel terrible about myself. Oh. Well, so, Bobby Wonder, I heard that you were able to meet Jessica Ware. Do you remember Jessica Ware? She is an entomologist and associate curator at the American Museum of Natural History, AKA, she's a fellow insect fan. <laughs> you both can have that to yourselves. Well, guess what? Um, we also happen to be big fans of Jessica and she sent a special message. I want you to look right there and take a look. Hi, Bobby. It's Jessica Ware from the American Museum of Natural History. It's so nice to see you again. I can't wait for you to come visit us here at the Solomon Family Insectarium at our new Gilder Center. We have a giant leaf cutter ant installation, lots of live insects, cockroaches, butterflies. Um, you get to imagine what it's like to be inside of a beehive, and I just can't wait for you to come see it. Wow. So, <laughs> here's the deal. We just found out that you're going to be one of the first to go behind the scenes with Jessica at the brand new Richard Gilder Center for Science and Education and Innovation. It opens, so it opens this spring. So before anybody else gets to go in, you get to hang out with the cockroaches and everything <laughs> else in there. The Gilder Center is dedicated to the most diverse animals on Earth and features exhibitions, galleries year-round, butterflies, immersive science and art experience, classrooms, and more. So you're going to go and get, you're going to hang out. So well, let me ask you, what are you going to be when you grow up? Um, I think, like, I, I would like to be a, a chemist in science because, uh -huh. like, I like to mix stuff. It's like I made the thing for the solution for the spider lantern fly. 
my gosh. Well, you are amazing. We love you and you are awesome, okay? Make sure you take pictures when you go visit. Thank you so much, Mo Monique, Bobby, Hayden. And thanks to our friends at the American Museum of Natural History.